So, Joy, it's great to have you here today. And can you tell us a little bit about, for the audience members that don't know who you are, a little bit about yourself and how you got into this field to be this celebrity fitness trainer, as you're known? <laughs> oh, the, the, Cliff, the Cliff Notes version and be my own hype man. It's always nice when somebody else hypes me up, but I guess I'll hype myself up. Yeah. Uh, long story short, grew up playing all sorts of sports, um, soccer, baseball, hockey, all the way through college. Uh, my teeth are real. Yes, by the way. And, um, you know, senior year of college, I didn't want to change my major three times. I didn't want to go to law school and tr personal train training was sort of in its infancy at the time. And, um, the physiology professor said, Hey, we're starting this personal training program. Do you want to sort of get involved? So I did that, got certified, picked up my yellow Mustang convertible, drove to Chicago, interviewed with two big box gyms, um, took a gig at one of them was there for a few years and then went out on my own, started training local Chicago celebrities, started doing some TV hits, wrote my first book, which um, was self-published, then started training like Terrence Howard and Wumi Misaku from HBO and some bigger celebrities. And my name kind of get started getting out there and more and more television appearances and speaking engagements and um, did a beach body open fit deal. COVID kind of happened, signed this book deal. And I guess I kind of hit that there. So I just started realizing I liked education after I graduated college, ironically. Cause I mean, I basically like, let's be honest, I went to college to, uh, to have fun and play hockey and basically stay on the ice. So I, I did, I did the bare minimum, no pun on my own book, uh, the, the bare minimum to basically keep my grades up to stay on the ice. And after that, I started realizing I liked learning about the body and nutrition and, and mindset and kind of everything that went into this next book. I'm laughing because of the bare minimum, I think that's such a, that's actually one of the things that drew me to talking to you today uh -huh. because I, a lot of the people who are listening, right. Are busy. Like we're all busy and not busy, but they're like working crazy 14 hour, 16 hour days. I'm trying to get home. You know, some of the women executives are getting home. They've got their kids to deal with the, the you know, it's just a great, you know, our lives. Right. Yeah. And so there, I always hear that fitness and nutrition are really incredible intentions. You know, that they're the new year's resolutions, right? Sure. Oh, let's, let me get this fitness thing going. And, you know, I make a priority of it, but I, I talk to so many of my clients who are like, Janet, I just can't get this one. I can't get this one. And so what would you say to them? You know, you're talking about bare minimum, which I love. Yeah. So so it's not, they're not going to become you, right? They're not going to become this trainer. They're not going to become this bodybuilder. Yeah. Thank God. That's, that's a what, lot. But what would you say? Yeah. One, I'd say, to, um, you know, do a life assessment and, and think about your life and your day because every body is completely different. Um, even if you're a twin, right? Unless you have the same job, same exactly everything. Like you're, you are unlike anybody else. So stop comparing yourself to anyone else. Look at your schedule, look at your day and look at your day like a movie. Okay. So I want you to think about your day. I get up, I do this. I felt tired. Okay. I went to work. I spent 20 hours on Instagram looking at Joey Thurman Fitz account. Wow. It's really good. Um, you know, like I, 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 I right, yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I spent, I spent this much time at lunch don't, don't judge it. Just write it down and then go back and look at like your, your day as a movie and watch that and think about that. Okay. Oh, 20 minutes here on Joey's account, maybe Netflix do that. What, what are these times where you could think about it? Did I waste time? And in business and anything else, like, did you waste time, you know, scrolling through emails? Did you waste time not getting things done, going through your checklist? In the same way with your health and wellness. That's why I wrote this book. It's a guide. It's not a fitness book. It's a wellness guide yeah. for your overall life, you know, mind, body, soul, gut health, mobility, all this sort of stuff. So then you think, okay, where can I get a little bit more and add these good behaviors in my life? I only have 20 minutes a day. Oh, well, I only need, I need an hour to work out. Who said you need an hour to work out? How many times have you gone to the gym and seen the person sitting on the same machine for an hour and do like three sets in 20 minutes, you could do 15 or 20. You could get that in if you have that intention going in. So in, uh, just because you're at the gym for an hour or working out for an hour, doesn't mean you are as efficient and effective as possible. So what's the minimum effective dose for you? So you can fit training into your life and not the other way around. It's a big difference. So where are these added positive behaviors that you can add in your life? Maybe you only have time to take a 10 minute walk after a meal. Okay, great. That's 10 minutes you didn't do. You got outside, you got some vitamin D, maybe you walk and talk, maybe you take a meeting. Um, it helps digestion after the meal. All these little things, when you add these positive things, don't seem so 
overwhelming as opposed to like, I need to take this away and my donuts and whatever. Don't get me wrong. Probably shouldn't be eating donuts. But like, we look at like all these things that we shouldn't do and we punish ourselves. Let's add the positive and naturally these negative things will go away. So just survey your life and then pick the moments and times when you can be more efficient and you can get the, the healthy meal and you can get that movement in. you can get some breathing work in. You do all of these things at, at a minimal effort doesn't mean they're easy, but they are simple. Big difference in that to create change in your body and your mind and your soul and your you know overall life. Yeah. And see, I find that in my work too, Joey, is that, you know, as a, as an executive coach, right. It's all about steps. It's mm-hmm. taking one step and they build on another and it's consistency. Right. But one of the things that yeah. as you're talking, I'm thinking is that a lot of people that we're talking to are high achievers, right? It's like mm-hmm. all or nothing. I'm going to go for it. It's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go on this fitness thing and I'm going to work out every single day for an hour and a half or else it's, it's not good enough. Or I'm going to like never eat carbs again. I'm never going to eat sugar again in my life. And then whatever the list is of all yeah. the fads, right? Keto. By the way, I eat do, carbs. Right? Carbs are good for you. Carbs are very good. For I you. agree. Uh, carry, hey, carry, I'm carry, with you. On carry that. on. Carb so let, so let, Hey, I'm, you know, <laughs> very big on carbs and, yeah. and I haven't, haven't been the same weight for like 15 years. Yeah. Let's talk about starting. Right. Mm-hmm. So starting from somewhere, knowing that you don't have to go out all or nothing because yep. this all or nothing approach, it might work at work, but it's not going to work. I, let's yep. say I'm someone who, uh, you know, I really have good intentions, but then I go the whole day. I haven't eaten. And then I go gorge myself and eat this crap that, you know, I know I shouldn't be eating, but it makes me feel good. Yep. What would you tell people? What should they do different? How could they change that in small, those small minimum doses? Yeah. So absolutely. Think of what type of person are you? Are you the type of person that needs completely regimented meals? Do you need to fit in your box? Do you need to go keto, paleo, carnivore, right? Like that's why a lot of these diets work for people because they like they're in their box. They found their tribe. I belong. If you're that type of person, then maybe you need to be regimented with like, you know, breakfast, I have my oats and egg whites. Lunch, I have my (laughs) chicken salad, right? Dinner, I have this. And if you need to eat the same thing every day, just to get rid of all the guesswork, amazing. You know, if you're that individual that likes to change things up and think things a little bit differently, <laughs> then fine. Like, you know, yeah, hands up. Um, you can do that as well. But like if in that example, if I have been eating all day and I'm really ravenous hungry, then you get to the point where like you're hyperphasic. This happens a lot in like nutrition and bodybuilding where you stay away from something for so long when you have it. It's like a drug addict, just a, just a bump of cocaine. Gorge, just keep, right. right, going. Or like an alcoholic who just had a shot. You can keep going with the analogies here. Um, and then you can't stop yourself because it's a chemical response, a reptilian response. Like you, I want more, I want more, I want more. And you overeat to the point where you become sick. And I've done it many a times. So yes, there's certain foods that you should stay away from. If you've got celiac, you've got something like that. You've got lactose intolerance, of course. But for the most part, people- but most can... people, oh, let's hold on that one, right? <laughs> so most people don't have celiac. Yes, right? most this people don't. Thing, right? I mean, well, so celiac let's go to like, that. A a very, celiac is a very small percentage of individual, individuals, but there are a good amount of people that have gluten intolerance, tolerance, that's right? right. Yeah. Which, you know, 20-ish percent, depending on what study you're looking at. So that is a thing, but I, breads, whatever, no problem. You're probably going to be okay with that. So if there's something that you know you eat and you don't feel good, whether that's an autoimmune thing, or you just don't feel good from having it and you feel bloated and whatever, then think about that. You need to stop and you need to give yourself that negative feedback loop. I have this pizza from Domino's, whatever, wherever it is, right? I feel like crap that day. I go to the bathroom terribly the next day. I don't feel good, but it felt good during. You need to stop. You need to anchor that thought. That's a negative feeling. I should not be eating this pizza because I feel like this for this many hours and I feel bad about myself and I kick myself again and again. So think about that. Create that negative feedback loop so you don't want to have that again. And then think, okay. And pause and choose. There's a pause, right? Yes, I mean, that's, exactly. That's one you of the have things we to. talk about all the time, the pause. Yeah. That's right. Because that, that's the, that's a dopamine response because right. dopamine is a reward pathway, but it's also motivation too. So you're, you're triggering yourself and telling yourself, okay, here's what I don't want to do. Now, what can you do? Okay. So I don't eat all day long and I, I have that pizza. I'm not demonizing pizza. It's just a good example of people. <laughs> so um, I don't eat all day long. Maybe one thing, I don't have time to chew. I'm sure you do, but at some point, maybe I make myself a smoothie in the morning with some greens and berries and put some protein powder in there. And I start with just that. Because if you start thinking about, oh, I need to have my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you become overwhelmed because you're so busy, and maybe you do it for a week or you start working out for a long time and you go off the rails again. 
So just start with that one thing, that smoothie in the morning that you could have it, or maybe with Greek yogurt, something very easy to have that's fast. And you can sit down and say, hey, this is good for me. Stop, have that pause. There you go, using yours. Um, have that pause, <laughs> digest, enjoy it for a few minutes, and then go about your day and then see how you feel for the lunch. And then think about like, oh, now I've got that negative feedback loop. Maybe it's not the pizza. Maybe I have, you know, something else as a, you know, a little bit more healthy for me as opposed to that option, because I don't feel good about myself when I do that. So you always got to think about this on an individual basis and add that small thing, which will naturally take away the negative. And for nutrition, the easiest thing people can do is start adding, adding more vegetables, more fruits, more whole foods. If it's moved, if it's grown, if it's lived before. You're naturally going to eat about 500 less calories, even if you're having the same standard American sad, highly ultra processed diet study by University of Michigan. Two groups, standard American diet, they could eat whatever they wanted to. And one group, standard American diet, where they had more whole foods. That group that had more whole foods by way of fiber and protein and you know fruits, vegetables, 500 less calories a day without counting, just by adding good things to your life. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you make a good point. Again, that all or nothing approach. The other thing I, I'm picking up as you talk, and this is a thing that kind of gets me with people, and I, I see it, is that I'm going to go on a diet, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go on a diet. And I don't know, I, just from all the studies I've done on this area, right? It's, there isn't, it isn't really a going on a diet. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So can you say a little bit more about how those choices add up? Because yep. it's not like, okay, I'm going to do this for a week. Like, you know, you're going to do a yeah. cleanse for a week. And then yeah. okay, then the next week we're going to gorge ourselves or whatever yes. else we want, right? So, so talk about that a little. Yeah. So one thing, we're all on a diet. Every, the, 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 the definition of a diet is what you eat in a day. Right. So think about that. Just let that sink in for a moment. So whether that's, you know, pizza and pasta or you're, you know, you're only having, you're vegan. You're all on a diet. Just because you're not you know, hypocaloric where you're less calories doesn't mean you're not on a diet. You can eat more calories and be on a diet. Okay. So let's just like change the definition there or be aware of the definition because people think it's like this deprivation thing. Um, so when you're thinking about like going on a diet, like what's the purpose of it? I guess it's a short-term results. Like let's say I'm getting somebody for ready for a red carpet. Maybe, yeah, maybe if they, if for them, if they just want to get into that dress and they do a 10 day juice detox, whatever bullshit cleanse thing, sorry if you, if you need to beat me. <laughs> um, and they got into the dress because they lost five to 10 pounds of water weight and they crapped their brains out for days. And you know that's going to go back on. Great. You know the context, you know why you're doing it. But if you think that is going to get that 10 pounds is going to be sustainable fat loss. That's huge because weight loss and fat loss is absolutely different. We want to maintain as much muscle tissue as we have, not become sarcopenic where we're lo losing muscle tissue. Maintain the muscle tissue and lose as much fat as we can. Because people want the scale to go down, but they're, what they're really saying is, I want to look better and lose fat. So I want to lose fat and not weight. So change that context. Now, if you're going on that juice cleanse, let's say that, and it's basically it's an elimination diet, right? Where you're just getting rid of a bunch of foods that you probably shouldn't be having and having more nutrition. And if you're using that as a catalyst to go into a healthy eating pattern, then I say, I'm all for it. Because context is king in every single area of your life. So if you know you can do that cleanse for 10 days and not go crazy afterwards, and then eat, you know, the 20,000 calories that you didn't have for a couple of weeks. Great. Good for you. That was probably a good thing for you, but most people can't do that. So think about it. instead of maybe the cleanse, you know, maybe it's like, okay, I'm swapping out my dinner for just a salad and some lean chicken. If, you know, if meat is your thing and then think about it from there and contextually how it's going to fit into your life. And have you done this before? Like we, we all heard this a thousand times with the definition of ins insanity doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we do this and I do the same news cycles like every year, new year, new year. Like, Oh my right. God, I want, I want to throw up in my mouth when I say that, but like, I know I'm going to get on TV because I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about it. That's why I wanted to change the narrative with the minimum method book. I'm like, Oh, it's, it's not, it's doing nothing. Like that's not what I said. Not what I said at all, but I looked at the research of somebody who's not doing anything right now. You're struggling to get off the couch to the starting line. What can you do? You're already in the race going to the finish line. So let's go level up and max out these three minimum mentalities. What can you do? 
you know, I, I can't do what you do. I didn't say in the beginning, you talked about, I don't, why would you want to do what I do? Why would you want to work out six days a week? That's crazy. But for me, I've been working out my entire life. I need to work out that much to create enough stimulus to keep growing muscle tissue for everybody else. You can work out. Literally, you can lift weights one day a week and grow and see results for months on end. We all think like all or none, right? But all or none creates none because you eventually go back. It's like everything else, right? Yeah, it's not just fitness, right? Yeah. It's everything. I mean, anything in your life is it applies to that. So talk about, so what is the minimum method? So what is the, what are the three things? Well, there, there's a lot, right? Um, but I, I, I kind of say- Just um, in a summary, right? Yeah, so in a summary. So obviously, I, I, you know, we're going to tell people to buy the book. Yeah, buy the book, more. blah, blah, blah. Let's right. myself, listen to my beautiful voice on the audio book. Uh, right. Available in all formats. All right. So- uh, I actually came out with the, with this um, analogy after I wrote the book, but I say ACL, awareness, consistency, and love and self-love. Okay, you need to be aware of you and who you are, right? And, and what's going to be good, that context. Consistency, how can you can be- I, Can I interrupt you there? Because I think that's so big. Absolutely. And awareness, right? Yes. When you say aware of who you are, I mean, that that just opens up a can of worms and we're mm-hmm. not going to get into all those worms today. But awareness, everybody, like people are looking for the next fad. And they don't realize that, okay, it's really about you and what's important. You talked about that, the whole thing, but what, talk a little bit more about that awareness piece. Cause yeah. I think that self-awareness piece is the start of everything. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, cause I, this was the first step in addiction and uh, AA. It's right. like, you know, you know, having that awareness and saying like, I, I'm an alcoholic, I have an addiction, I have a problem. So we all have to be aware of everything around us, our entire lives. And, you know, like I've got a five-year-old son. I, I have a wife. I have responsibilities. I need to be aware of everything around me, the people around me, my decisions affect them, their decisions affect me. And then how much time that I have too. Okay. Am, am I, do I have enough time to, I'm doing a bodybuilding competition first time in 12 years. Now I have the time I'm off of like the crazy book tour. I was aware that I had that time. I was aware in the moment I had the conversation with my family that I was going to do this. And they were with me. So like just the the cognitive awareness to know where you're at in your life and if whatever that you want to do in business or personal or health is going to be worth it. If you want to look like the cover of a magazine and you don't have an hour or two hours a day and you know meals prepped for you and you don't have the time to do it, you're not going to be able to look like that. So you're setting these you know false expectations up. Right. But if you want to try to get in really good shape, and you get to like just the point, like oh, almost see your abs. And all of a sudden you think this is a failure. It's called negative lumping. Like, no, you still had success. You still got in better shape. Maybe you don't have like the shredded six pack abs, but you're still so much better than you were before. So why do we, why do we lump all that negative there? As opposed to thinking about, wow, I am so much further than I was. Maybe I didn't get to that point, but you know what? I'm aware that I didn't have the time. I, I wasn't able to get in everything that I could. So awareness is you know, absolutely one, you know, one of the best things you can do for yourself in any facet of life. So anyway, keep going. Yeah. So uh, go to the yeah, C, right? Yeah. So see, I, consistency. I just interrupted you because I think that's such a big yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Consistency. And and that's with, and so it's consistency. What, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> it's with work. It's working out with business. You know, um, we can go down the line there. You need to be consistent in your efforts because you see all these people in these like extertainment classes with the bright lights and whatever, like go as hard as you possibly can. Okay. You do that for a little bit. You feel injured. You, you can't maintain that. So they're, they're trying to focus on intensity over consistency. Right. So you need to have that consistency in getting to the gym or getting, taking your walks or your nutrition. I say gym, I don't necessarily mean a gym, right. sweaty, meathead, tan, Good. you know, wearing yeah. fingers. Okay. I mean, working out like people think like in resistance training, resistance is your own body weight. Right. At some point, if you need to like, you know, you want more posterior chain and back and stuff. Yes. You're going to need to add some bands and, you know, s- suspension straps or dumbbells, anything like that. But to start, if you haven't, if it's, you're just beginning or it's been, you know, 30 years since you played high school football. Yeah. Body weight can do a lot. So I say gym, I just mean working out in general. People right. like, people like only see black and white. Let's, let's, we can they do. The, yeah. let's <laughs> so live in the, let's live in the you. gray. It's fine. Right. We can live I, in the gray here. Gray. Uh, so consistency and, and going in, like think, think about yourself as a professional athlete. They have off seasons, they have bye weeks, they have off games. You know, they, they don't, you know, if they're pitchers, they're only pitching every four games. So they're trading their bodies for rest and recovery and they're having consistency over time. Why can't we treat ourselves that way? 
Why do you always need to go 100% all the time and all this crap that you see on social media? Like, I did this workout. Now you do it for five rounds. One, I know these social media influencers with the millions of followers, they don't even do the workout. They film it because it's fancy for that. They did consistent things like squats, pushes, pulls, things to get their body that way. And then they shot that for camera because they had the consistency in the beginning. Consistency in your efforts there is going to be huge. And once you have that consistency over, let's say, a few months time, then you can add the intensity and pick and choose where you want to have that intensity, where you push yourself just a little bit. Let's say it's like a leg press machine or squats. Can, can you add some weight? Can you go to the point where you, you know, can't really do one more rep so you get a little bit more out of the muscle fiber? Can you maybe you know add a little bit more fiber to your life? That's when you start adding these intense moments. Can you, instead of walking, maybe can you brisk walk or walk backwards outside, which will help your knee health? Can you walk in the cold when it's cold outside to maybe help your metabolic rate, you know, cover the necessary parts, but like less clothing. That's when you add that, that intensity, when you have the consistency, but intensity over consistency is going to kill you every time. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, amen is what I would say about that. Now, when you think about some of the people listening, right, there's a, there's something that happens and you know, there's, there's research on this after someone turns 40, you know, and 40 and above. Mm -hmm where your metabolism slows down and people are eating the same amount of food, mm -hmm. doing the same things and still gaining weight. Well, let me stop uh, you on that. Actually, no. I'm sorry? That's, that, that, actually, no, that's wrong. Okay. So, so, you're, so, you're, so your metabolism. And um, also women then who then, you know, are around perimenopause, right? 45 uh -huh. yeah. above. Then that starts, that's a whole other can of worms that it seems like a lot of fitness trainers like yourself are criticized because, Hey, you don't get it right. You don't get yeah. that people are, are really trying really hard and they're not losing weight. Yeah. So here's the thing you hit 40 and all of a sudden your metabolism goes to shit. No, that's wrong. It's a complete myth. Now our metabolisms as we're young need to be higher as we're, as we're babies as we're growing up as in all the way through adolescence until you're about in your twenties and your twenties, it's less than 1% and they pretty much stay stagnant from 20 to 60 years old. It's less than 1%. It's like 0.06 or so, like literally nominal up until you're in your 60s. Does your metabolism slow down? And they actually looked at that. They think that's actually lack of resistance training and less muscle tissue because muscle tissue isn't crazy metabolically active, but it's metabolically active. It helps you move faster, makes you feel better. So it's also lack of movement. Not that your metabolism just goes to crap, you know, at 30, 40 and all downhill from that. No, you probably are moving much less. Now, yes, you can look at menopause and stuff and there's hormonal factors that can come into play Right, which with is that. like mid forties, right? Perimenopause yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, depending right. on yeah, what's happening. Yeah. Um, so you can look at that, but as far as metabolic rate, they've studied this extensively. It doesn't just go down the tubes. What happens is we can have metabolic adaptation. Where so your metabolism is very resilient. Like even in the Minnesota starvation study, when they're having like something oh, crazy yeah. like 500 calories for a long time, once they went back up to eating where they normally should, their metabol metabolisms they weren't broken. They went. They back would to gain normal. weight. Yeah, well, but, but if but they it, ate less, they would gain weight, right? Or they well, no. So the so the study was you know I can't yeah. remember how how long, but it was about 500 calories. And once they went back up to eating the normal calories that they should, yeah, their metabolisms naturally adapted. Huh. So they they would probably gain weight faster because that you need to what's called reverse diet go back up in calories but your metabolism isn't wrecked it's fine like on a hormonal level on a stress level there's other things that are happening there but when people diet down for so long you shouldn't be on a diet all year you should not do that that's not good for you so what I suggest is look at like if you're having, I have 800 calories a day like one that's way too low women I never recommend less than 1200 you should probably do, there's a calculation in the book. You could even take your body weight times by 15. And that's a rough estimate of how many calories you should have in a day just to maintain your weight. And then you could have add some more movement in there. You could cut away a little bit of calories. But when you're too low for too long, your metabolism naturally adapts to that. Uh, and it's called the exercise energy constraint model. So eventually you will be moving less will have less um, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the tapping, the fidgeting, whatever. When you start working out more, you have less calories and you're taking in, your body's naturally going to slow itself down throughout the rest of the day. You're going to feel more tired. So it needs less calories. Mm. So metabolism doesn't just like stop at 40, stop at 50. They're contextually like people are all different and they have their things. But for the most part, people are under eating for so long that when they do eat more, like then their body isn't used to that amount of calories. This happens to fitness competitors all the time. It's called they, their refeed. They did it wrong. And the reverse diet, they did it wrong. So they 
We're down to like 1400 calories for five, six, seven, eight weeks. And then they gorge for a week or two on end and they put on all this water weight. They put on all this fat because their body was used to lower calories and they mm. didn't slowly acclimate and build back up. So I tell people to go on like an eight or 12 week diet, you know, find your calories in that eight or 12 weeks. Let's say you'd multiply your body weight times by 15 and you do that for eight to 12 weeks. And then you take a four week break where you slowly have more calories, like 5% each week. And you find your new calorie set point. Let's say you lost 10 pounds. So that might be 150 calories less that you need now at that point to maintain that weight. And then after a few weeks, then you can go back on a diet and then you slowly keep adjusting that way. That's right. a much healthier way to do it. And mentally too, you think, okay, I've got two months to be on this. I can hang out with two months and have this like whatever diet, you know, whatever modality you're on. And then for four weeks, I can have a little bit more. Even in the book, I've got a, something called the weekday diet where it's research from my buddy, Dr. Bill Campbell from University of Southern Florida, where he fed people, um, you know, they were hypocaloric for seven days a week. So they're having less calories seven days a week. And one group had less calories five days a week, even less calories. And then on the weekend, they increased their calories by way of carbohydrates. Both groups lost about seven pounds, but the thing, remember weight loss and fat loss is different. But the group that refed on the weekends, so basically they were able to have about 35% more calories by way of just carbs on the weekends, and you could have protein, or whatever. They actually maintained their metabolic rate higher, the resting metabolic rate. They maintained more muscle tissue and lost more fat by refeeding on the weekends. So if you want something simple, like, hey, Monday through Friday, I can watch what I eat. And Saturday and Sunday, maybe I can have that glass or two of rosé. I can have the bread. I can have the pizza. Things that I know just a little bit. I'm not full on cheating, right. but I have those three extra hundred calories. And that mentally will make you feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, great points. Great advice there. Now, what would you get? What advice would you give people who are this on this stop and start thing? Because it's like, oh, you know, I do this, then I stop. Then I go, mm -hmm. you know, have chocolate cake all the time. And then I stop again and start over again. And they're on this like treadmill, which is actually wrecking their metabolism with what is what you're kind of saying in a way. Yeah. Like it's, you yeah. Know, it's not, it's not wrecked. It's adapting, right? It's, it's a, adapting. It's a, it's adapting. It, right. Yes. But you could call it what you will, but yes, yeah. it's, it's adapting. It's your yo-yo dieting and it just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work. Exactly. It doesn't work. Um, so like one look at, you know, once again, go back to that awareness thing and okay, you need your chocolate. If that's the one thing like, God, I gotta have my chocolate cake. Okay, if you can have that one sliver of cake and that can be your one sliver and that can just satiate you enough and you can, you know, you can look at your overall calories and you can still fit that in your day and you can have the one sliver if you need that to stay mentally there. So you're not stopping again. You, you keep moving. We're, 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 you know, we're walking like we, we need to walk before we crawl. So you're crawling, maybe you're walking, maybe you're eventually running. If that one sliver of cake keeps you satiated, keeps you aware and moving towards your goals, amazing. But if that one sliver of cake turns in, in, into the entire cake, <laughs> yeah. you just can't have that food group. That's you can't. Right. Yeah. And you need to like, the, oh, moderate everything in moderation. No, I don't believe in that because that's your drug. If that chocolate cake is your drug, you cannot have that sliver. And you just need to tell yourself, you can't do it. You can't have it. Like some people, you know, if the cake's in the house, they'll they'll eat it. Right. Sometimes for me, like the cake can be in the house, but if I have a piece, I'm going to have the whole thing. So I, it's, if it's in the house, no big deal but I just can't try it. People are like, oh, just have a little bit. I'm like, I can't because I know myself. Yeah, no, I no. I mean, I think what you're saying is so practical and people can relate to it, And but it sounds so simple, right? Mm -hmm. It sounds like, oh, of course, just abstain. But then why is this? You know, obviously, this is such a problem for so yep. many people. Yep. And so I guess the one of the last couple of questions I would ask you is mm -hmm. you talk about consistency and that's really after awareness, right? That's the mm -hmm. key. And then we can get to intensity at another time. Right. But self love is the last one, just so you know. But you know, we we all need to have love for ourselves. Yeah. So I want you. I want to. I want you to talk about that a little. But talk a little bit about the consistency thing. So mm -hmm. if somebody was just starting out, what would be consistent? Like, give an example. Yeah. So I would say uh, three ten minute walks. After, if, let's say you eat three three times a day. If you eat two times a day, I don't care. Three ten minute walks. So Sesame Street math here, 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30 is the number of the day, right? Um, I don't know which Sesame Street character that was. <laughs> all right. So you all of a sudden, you got 30 minutes of movement in a day where you didn't think you had 30 minutes to fit it in there, but you did 10 and 10 and 10. After the meal, helps digestion, helps nutrient absorption, 
Like you don't have to do 30 at once. If you can, amazing. If not, like literally these bursts of exercise or exercise snacking, as I say, and incorporate those into the day. Okay. So you've got three 10 minute walks a day. Okay. Maybe two days a week instead of, you know, the, I don't have time to do 10, 10, 10 and another 10. Fine. Maybe it's two walks and it's 10 minutes of maybe body weight. I, I do squats. I do 20 squats. I take 30 second breather. I do 20 squats. I take 30. You can do that for 10 minutes. Great. Add that in there. Then the next day, maybe it's you've got weights at home or you, you know, I've got a gym at your office building or whatever. 10 minutes of weight training. I've got a buddy who's an NBC anchor here in Chicago. He walked in all the time and he was just like, looked like he just didn't want to be at the gym. I said, think about it if you walked into NBC like that. Would you hate your job? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you're already walking and hating being here. Instead of speaking, he's like, well, I need to be an hour here. I'm like, why do you need to be in here for an hour? I said, come in here only be for 20 minutes. Give me 10 sets in 20 minutes, two body parts, five sets each body part. Mm -hmm. He's been doing that for weeks on end. He's like, oh my God, I'm seeing results. I'm like, yeah, because you walk in, your mind is, is better. You know, there's a tree in the front and I call that your shit tree. You leave your shit there, just hang it up and then get your 10 sets in, 20 minutes in and out. And then eventually we'll start adding more. But right now that's going to keep your mind right. So that kept him consistent because he knew that was going to work for him. And I knew that was going to work for him as well. So the three 10 minute walks a day, you throw in, you know, two days of 10 minutes of resistance training, whatever form that is, body weight, weights, bands, whatever. That's going to be amazing. And then regulating your sleep, going to bed and waking up at the same time, seven days a week. I'm, I'm, I didn't even say seven to nine hours of sleep. Amazing if you can get that. But consistent bed and wake time will regulate your hormones back to perimenopause, all that sort of stuff is going to make you feel better. You're going to have less body fat, more energy, and just be more uh, cognitively aware throughout the day just from getting that consistent sleep, even if it's less than that recommended seven to nine hours of night. Yeah, sleep. I mean, we can go into a whole other show on sleep, right? Yeah, that's that's I mean, my that's, biggest chapter in the book. That, that's, so that's so big. Uh, so what's the self-love? Talk about that. The self-love. Yeah. I mean, cause I've, fall, I've fallen in this trap a lot. Like I was like, want more and more and more. And I realized like, I, I need to have this, this love for myself and what I'm doing and love the process, love the journey. Everybody wants to talk about their why, but how do you get to the why? What's your path? So I started realizing like, okay, what I'm doing now is great. Like I, I love myself. Like my, my why is, you know, my son all the time. Like I'm working you know, towards him for him to be proud of me. So I'm having that awareness and that that love for myself to know that I, I'm going to be a good dad from, I want him to be proud that I'm his father, not because I'm on TV or doing all these things, but so it's good to him, right? I, I, I helped develop uh, him as a good human being. And that self-love, if you don't have love for yourself and you're giving love to everybody else and you're the one that is always taking care of the ones around you, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't be here to take care of them. And that's lost in so many people. That's why I say they say self-love is the best love. So at times, yes, you've got to give more of yourself than you can give to yourself. And that happens. But like, for example, my mother, we've got a family member who's sick. And I'm like, do you take care of yourself? Because if she, I know her, she's going to want to stay up. She's going to be in the hospital, all sorts of things. Like, But you need to go home and get to sleep. Because you're going to be awake and aware to take care of her and to talk to the doctors and to you know, talk to, you know, my cousins and relay this information because they're distraught because, you know, their mother is very sick. So sometimes we need to be aware, like we just have to take care of ourselves so we can be there for everyone else. And there's a give and take relationship and relationships are, you know, they're, they're never 50, 50 ever in relationships. With 50. Sometimes it's 70, 30, sometimes it's 60, 40. Sometimes people are going to be more important than yourself, but you have to be aware, like what are those little things you can do even if it's only like, oh, I'm going to get that four hours of sleep at night. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my walk in in the morning. I'm going to get my sunlight. These little things you can do, even in these really stressful times, maybe some breath work. I've got a whole chapter on breathing. Okay, take a deep breath in through your nose, 20% more oxygen, hold it. And then take a deep breath out slowly for double the inhalation time. Just a few rounds of that can calm you down and take you from parasympathetic uh, fight or flight to rest, digest, and recover. So even if that self-love for that day is only two minutes of breathing, which is crazy, like two minutes of breathing, but mm -hmm. conscious effort breathing in, slowly out. Right there, that makes me feel better. Two minutes. Self-love is the best love. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I 
it's funny. Some of the things you're talking about, Joey, they don't just apply to it. I, I don't think you're talking just about fitness. I am not. This is not, I mean, it's, it's so much of mindset and it's so much of leadership, right? Because mm -hmm. leaders are there for other people and if they're at service, right? And so if you're not, and I always say that leaders set the weather, they set the energy, the energetic tone, and all of that is part of your body and your, your system. And so if you're not replenishing that, then you're out, you're empty. And so I, I love this concept that you just brought up at the end about self-love because it's not all about just diet and working out. Absolutely not. That's why people, you know, this is a fitness book. No nope. nutrition book. Nope. Yeah. This is your overall guide. You know, that's why I start with myths. I apologize for the entire fitness and nutrition industry in the beginning, even my 23 year old self. Because it is not, nobody has the same 24 hours in a day. That that single mom that's working in multiple jobs, her 24 hours is different than mine. Mine is different than, than anybody else's. So for people to compare themselves like, oh, well, you, why can't you fit that in? At 20 something years old, I had much more time. I don't now. So now I need to pick and choose where I can fit in, what I need to get in you know, for myself and for my family. And you, know, you, you have to be aware of that. I mean, I was going to ask you, what else do you have to offer? I mean, that is like the biggest gem that you just offered us right now is that, you know, you have to, that's what you have to do. But do you have anything else to say before we go? No, I mean, look, I just think that um, you wouldn't want to look at yourself years from now and be used to being in pain, whether it's physically or emotionally. So you can do the things now, even if you're 75, 80 years old. You can do things to make yourself better, to feel better, and you can have more cognitive cognitive awareness. You can do more neuroplasticity work. You can challenge your brain. There's these things that you can do, and it's not a lost cause. It may seem more difficult because you're stubborn now and older. I get it. I just turned 40. I'm stubborn. But when you push through that, that pain, that resilience, those things that are hard for you to do, once you push through that, then that's when your body changes. That's when your mind changes. So just focus on a little bit of the push, focus on those positive behaviors, and you're going to be so much better off with that. Just push through it. Just push through it. Or just push to it, even just to it. We don't even need to go through it. Just yeah, push, yeah. push to it. Like yeah, feel the good. edge. I love like, it. I love rub, that. Rub the edge. Push to it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Joey. I mean, I think this is really helpful because I do think this is a topic that applies to everyone, yet we're always in the mindset of, well, I can't, I don't have time. There's always an excuse. And so the other thing, just push to it, but also no more excuses, right? You got it. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you.